65% of the brain's energy is coming from ketones, even though the ketones are at half the concentration of the glucose. Huh. So if we were to say the brain has any fuel and the brain is its own hybrid relying on glucose and ketones primarily. And so to say that the brain prefers glucose, that's demonstrably incorrect because the moment ketones start to hit the blood, even when it's still at half the level of, of what the glucose is, the glucose is now accountable for more than two times. Uh, the, the ketones is more accountable than two times of what the glucose is feeding the brain. So if the brain prefers any fuel, it's obviously it's obvious that it has a preference for the fuel that is at the lower level, and yet it's still prioritizing as its primary uh, metabolite or primary fuel source. So that addresses the idea that the brain prefers glucose. Um, and again, that idea has been led has led to other mythical ideas, like if the brain uses 120 grams of glucose, then in a day, then that means you need to eat 120 grams of glucose, which itself is, of course, a fiction. The liver is more than capable, the, the nutrient soccer mom, of providing glucose for the body. But also at the same time, of course, like I said, it's providing ketones to offset the need for the glucose in the first place. But then back to the idea that the brain requires glucose, this is something that I don't believe has ever actually been answered. Uh, I don't believe it's even been asked. Like the question being, to, to what degree does the brain actually require glucose? Now, the problem with that question is that it is not a physiological question. It is not one that you can ask because if you were to try to force glucose to be zero and deprive the body of glucose, not only would you have some cells like red blood cells suffer because red blood cells actually do require glucose. We know that for certain because they don't have mitochondria and are thus forced to rely on the only fuel that can be fermented, namely glucose, or in other words, used outside of the mitochondria. So it's you're going to damage your body in other ways. But even second, to push the glucose levels to zero, you would have to give the animal or the human a big bolus of insulin. In doing so, you would successfully lower the glucose, but at the same time, you're going to inhibit ketogenesis. And so you'd also force the ketones to zero, which of course is a state incompatible with survival because now the brain is deprived of both of its fuels. So what we're doing is an experimental, a very well-validated experimental model from rodent, a rodent model, where you're able to take sections of the brain and incubate them in a bath in which they maintain viability. So by all accounts, the tissue is still alive, even though it's ex vivo, it's out of the animal.